Welcome everyone, welcome everyone. Of course, you know, this is the finally show. And I'm your boy, Jeremy. And of course, you know, this is a show where we as fans get to express and discuss our points and views around the beautiful game. And of course, you know, sometimes it might seem biased, but it's always factual. So this week, of course, you know, we're going straight into the Jamaican Premier League. And that's our local game. So it, can, it got off without, without an itch. And um, to discuss the, the Jamaican Premier League game with me is the co-founder and CEO of Prembrokal Elite Soccer, the man himself, Damani Kildare. So Kildare, what going boss? Uh, greetings. Thanks for having me. Welcome, man. Welcome, man. Welcome, man. You know, of course, you know, you are the founder of Pez, you know, so you are one of the man them who definitely I look forward to the future in development and, of course, you know, management of some of the young talents. So, congrats again, my brother, on the move there. You know, we'll see what I go on. Well, I get a special interview with you uh, on Pez, but for today, we're going straight into the Jamaican Premier League. And I know, of course, you know, you're one of the man them who are on the ground. Um, first up, you know, Defending champions, Cavaliers going up against Arnett Gardens. Yeah. Arnett just can't seem to buy a win. <laughs> Cavaliers yeah. coming out 2 1 winners on the death at the last of the game. You know, actually, uh, Chevron Willis get an equalizer from Arnett Gardens around, around the 85th minute. And then, of course, you know, Cavaliers again, youthfulness taking over. Come out winners on that again. Um, also, action again is the um, the second runner up, which is Waterhouse. <laughs> you use a man from around that area, you can say your club. I think it's a club, club kind of salt. Uh, unlucky, uh, three consecutive finals. Um, of course, you know, losing all of them. Uh, Waterhouse came coming back, um, from one nil down against 10 man, Mobe United. Mobe United people has returned back to the Premier League due to UE's um, non involvement in this year's Premier League. So Waters coming over 2 1 winners over um Mobe United since their return. Dumbo Olin, also a new team in the Premier League. Um, would have garnered some experience from the midfielder Jamil Adria, who came on also late to get the winner 2 1 winners over Via United as well. So that's Dumbo Olin. Um, Tivoli Gardens playing also to Portmore United. That's 1 1. A scrappy game, but we get into that. Uh, the stars of the East. Chevron Reed, Kingston College Farmer standout, shine. Man, shine is going to be, for me personally, I think that's going to be the team to, your, to watch, you know, Chevron Reed and, and, and Okesa Chung. So, 2-2, two, two, very good game. Uh, more lines as well, shot me. I think more lines stayed in the game. So, the 2-2-1 two, two, there. And of course, you know, the big one, the big, big one, the crushing one, the men with all the money, the Manchester City of Jamaica, Mount Pleasant, um, Everyone riot over the enterprise led Umber Lion 5 1. There's more to the details, and of course, we get into it. But um, 5 1 don't look good, especially for a team that was should have been relegated had there been a relegation system. And again, people, in case you're not following our league, there's no relegation system for the, the Jamaican Premier League for the last two seasons. So this season will be the last one, and then there will be some form of relegation. Mr. Kildare. That's how we go on the top of it. <laughs> and of course, you know, people, a lot of transfer happen. And I'm going to go straight over to my coaching bridge over there, damn one. Damani, tell me about some of the transfers that we've seen so far. Well, most of the transfers have been the ins. Uh, the shocking one that stood out is Portmore United reinstating back Rudolph Austin. Um, <laughs> what I thought he retired. Yeah. So Rudolph Austin is, is back after playing some time in the Denmark top division with the Brandby and Esberg. So he's back yep. at the... Yeah, he's currently back. But he's experienced. Experience. Yeah, he's I not the captain. Because but... there's a lot of youths over there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was the standout transfer so far. I think after that, we would have said Bembo, Kari Bembo leaving Mount Pleasant. Yeah, well, he and left prematurely in, 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 in the yeah. last season. I guess yeah. he went back home. I guess he went back home. Yeah, went back home, home. Yeah. And some others from more present. Uh, mm -hmm. They've gotten the services of Ricardo Morris. They might not spend the money. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, so Ricardo Morris is there. Who? Ricardo Morris is there. Alan Atti is yeah. there. Yeah, Cleon Price. Cleon Price. Yeah. 
Uh, I think that those are the standouts so far. What's your person aside from that? You have Arnett guys who would have gotten you know, a little fellow player from down the road, Boy Stone, but he was at Portmore before the season. Yeah, um, it's a big shocker for me. I know yeah. him personally, so I don't know how he's going up for the red and black, either, but that's how it is. Yes, but Arnett also seems like. Yeah, honestly, seems like one of the teams who do a lot of business in the transfer window. Go through them for me. Yeah, maybe to McDonough as well. Um, he has, he has returned. Yes, how been, and he has returned to 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 earn it. Mm -hmm. Uh some shocking one as well. Like you would have had him at the top, but Jamil Hardware. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell you, I know that player very closely, you know, and I was shocked myself. Yeah, I yeah, see him yeah, yeah. coming out down in the number five for Dumbo holding of all the places. You know, it was really a shocker for me. But it's good yeah, to see good. some of the experienced ones back in the league as well, too. Mm -hmm. um, some, Lyon, people, some, some others, uh, Francois Sweet, even more places as well, to Veer, yeah, Veer United. Yeah, most of the attacking Mourinho, now. the Mourinho effect, man. That's the Mourinho effect, Dana Van Duki. <laughs> yes, uh, but. Primarily two, 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 two good outings uh, for Cavaliers specifically. Uh, Melvin Daxi, the St. Lucian, has gone to the Polish, I think, second division. I was he, wondering, you know, so it's good that you bring yeah. it up. Because I was wondering, I saw him last season, I was looking forward to see him again. When I see the first game and I not seen him, I was wondering if it was some corona effect. So thank you for that, because I, I didn't know. Honestly, I didn't know. Yeah, and come on, Simpson, one of the, the, the top defenders there. He's gone to El Salvador yeah. as well. Yeah, well I've, I would have seen Simpson from earlier. I would have seen Simpson. Mm -hmm. And a couple of the players also who's, who, 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 who pairs, which you are the CEO of, um, is also on trials through your system as well. Of course, you know, standout youngster Shaquille Bradford, also yes, yes. who was one of the marquee players for Waterhouse. He's now in Portugal in trials. So all the best for the youngster. Um, we really hope we don't see him back in the Premier League and him stay over there. And of course, you know, that man and him boys can get some feather in the cap. So, those are some of the transfers that we would have seen in the Jamaican Premier League. I always want to call it the Red Stripe Premier League. I don't know why, I never brother. I don't know. Yeah. But it is the Jamaican Premier League. And of course, you know, some of the, some of the marquee games. But the man, what we've seen from the first week of action, going back to the first game, defending champions, Cavaliers, playing against a very new look. Arnett Gardens, entirely new look Arnett Gardens team, new coaching staff, new management, um, extremely new players. I would have thought that Arnett Gardens are moving towards the youngsters, but they seem to have gotten a lot of experience back yeah. up there. What was your take on that game? Well, it, that, the, the basis that you, which you spoke of, the, the overall that they, they did at the club with coach Eric Rademakers and T got coming, young, youthful, exuberant coach with that experience. And that, mm -hmm. that's a they did with the squad. Um, you know, Shevano Willis um winning championship with Portmore already uh, as a senior player, you know, Bebito McDonald senior in the league as well, but returning to, to earn it and bolster in the roster. And as well as the, the, the experience that most of the young players would have gone at last season with, with, with um the likes of uh Romeo Guthrie, uh yeah. Yeah. Cephas, you know. But I think what I, I can't really say like the score really line, like Yeah, Cephas is very pacey. But what I can say from apart from the scoreline is that Arnett is definitely better off than from last season. You yeah, see if, the, if you the watch the team yeah, and you yeah. watch the game and seeing that game, you can see that there's an overall thing happening at Arnett. Yeah. And I can tell you, they're going to come good. Because, of course, you know, yeah. returning also is a veteran, Fabian Reed. And that man, if you can see the goal yes. that it led, led up to, was sheer experience, held up the play and then setting it up for the right man. So I think Arnett God is definitely coming back into the thick of things. Um, the other game, Waterhouse versus Mobe United. Mobe, of course, you know, down in the service of the overseas coach there. What's his name again? Remind me of the name. Uh, Ricky Hill. Ricky Hill. Ricky Hill. That was the man yeah. who was touted to take over Coach Tapador with more job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he's actually at uh, Mount Pleasant. Um, sorry, Montego Bay. And um, I really think that Waterhouse is a very good unit, um, very consistent, of course. You don't make three consecutive finals if you're not good. Uh, I just think that they're unlucky. And um, the first game of the season, you can really see how much of a, of a golfing class Waterhouse and Cavaliers 
can be considered over the, the, the others. As of course, Montego Bay went down to 10 man, but um again, Waterhouse just really showed golf in class and, and took control of that game. So I'm not sure. Any points from your side? On my side. <laughs> well um yeah. Mobi, I think normally when the teams get promoted, you will see that, but I, I still favor them to get relegated. I, I, I I've not seen enough. That's a big car. That's a big yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. Even though they won't really get it, but I think it's a given that teams that will get promoted will have yeah, some. Yeah, when they get promoted, they get a yeah. time to. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I totally agree with you. And of course, you know, they would have missed some of their usual stars. I mean, Alan Ati, the Jordan Fletcher, all of those yeah. guys are, oh, are now yeah. at different clubs. Yeah, so I, I, I totally understand what you're saying. But, um, our review, uh, I like the setup of the Arborview team, honestly. And with Chung missing that game, and you see Trevor Reed looking that like, yeah. looking that good on his debut. Um, I, I just think they're gonna come. But I'm still worried about Arborview because Arborview has always been this mythical team where they tend to perform during the preliminary round, and when it comes to the playoff, them tend to just fade away. So I am not too excited as to what Arborview will bring this season, but. I'm do excited for the fact that they have some youngsters and, and, and these are some of the quality youngsters that we have now in the nation. So two to one there over um over 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 with Mo, with Molines. Molines, yeah. Molines really look really look good as well. Molines took in it, Molines took the lead twice over Arborview. So and Molines never really looked bad last year. Other from there yeah. was some you know, there was some in house thing that you could see that really affected them. And um, that's where I think they, they faltered away about. Moline's still a big, big point here to start the season. Um, and if what we're seeing so far at the start of the season, Damani, um, it's a good advert for the Jamaican Premier League. I think I've, I've only seen one or two games that I can say it wasn't up to par. But all the other games, you can see crisp ball movement happening. I'm still not a fan of this AstroTurf because our players, they do not train on an AstroTurf. They play on the normal original feel that we're used to so to get mm -hmm. them to play in the one o'clock sun anybody who visit jamaica you can know one o'clock sun is not a normal sun so for them to be playing on the astroturf is very hard for them but um one of the dollar games that i would have seen is um tivoli gardens versus uh portmore united what's your take on that one 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 i think uh portmore is basically on a revamping state Tivoli is getting seasoned in the league based on what they have, have, have done last season. Mm -hmm. Prior to now. Surprise us everybody last season going to the semi final. Well, one team that you mentioned, how about you? The regular attacking pros of that team is very good, but the defense, I don't think they will make the top six this year. Probably yeah. Arnold, <laughs> you have mentioned. Yeah, probably Arnold yeah. Probably, probably take their space, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so as I said, I, I'm not sure about that. But Portmore, as you say, a young look team, very new. Yeah. Um, they would have parted ways with many of them experienced players, of course. You know, Chevron Willis, um, Ricardo Morris. I was very surprised that Ricardo Morris actually left. Honestly, I was very, very surprised. But they should know, and of course, you know, Portmore and um Arborview and Cavaliers are three of the standard bearers in when it comes in, in blooding youth into the national into their, their senior setup. So I don't think it's anything new for them. So 1-1 one, one there for Tivoli versus Portmore United. And of course, the marquee game <laughs> is, of course, you know, Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant. Who some are, very, are widely regarded as the Manchester City of the Jamaican Premier League. Mount Pleasant going up against Umbelayan and Wally Boys. Why? My virgin, my virgin, my virgin, they call Sandra Price. Coach Price. <laughs> I, I've been Probably seeing such a predicament again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't look, good. doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. Not this early. I mean, you you would have been no fighting relegation for almost three seasons. You don't want that to happen. But in his somewhat defense, is that um, most of the players? What I've what we've heard is that most of the players from his current Umbrian setup did not feature in that first game. It was a it, it it was overly populated with a lot of youngsters. Some of them, are, honestly, I don't even know their name. Um, the, the senior player, I saw Vanzi playing center half, and I know Vanzi is a good look central defensive midfielder. But when you put Vanzi at center half with them young bustling money down at Mount Pleasant, who are very technical and tactical, 
you're always going you're always going to spell danger i was very ashamed at one point when it was four nil at the first half so <laughs> i was saying this don't look good you know and of course you know andrew price is assisted by O'Neill thompson one of his former player and also a national representative so there's a lot of coaching experience happening down there i am not sure what happened behind the scene um as to why several of his key players because of course you know Vishnal, um, Xavier and Verba, all of those are down there and they never featured. Kenny Hyde is a very talented midfielder in my book. Um, he wasn't a part of the setup as well. So. But it just doesn't look good. But, but, look good but just, um, watching the game, I wouldn't say it was so bad on Humberland's part, but it was just the brilliance of the, the, yeah, yeah. the monkey yeah, attack. Yeah. They, they have changed the weapon that they have had last year in terms of mm -hmm. the acquisition, acquisition of, of Clear price and Ricardo and I think, and I think that will be the X factor this this season. I think they will go to the finals if they win is a plus, but I think they definitely want to go to the Conquer Cup or the CFU. So I think that's the yeah, aim. I, I think, think, think the finals. Yeah, that's, that's the aim. That's the definitely the aim for Mount Pleasant right there. They mm -hmm. want to be in that top two position so that they can play in the in the um, Conquer Cup Champions League. But again, more pleasant looking exceptional. Well, I don't know what you're talking about in terms of how it looked. And as again, Umbelian was fighting relegation last season. So you wanted to get the best possible yeah. start. And it was just an embarrassing start. So hopefully the Lions can bounce back and my Virgin Andrew Price can, you know, stabilize the ship. But Damani, so far it's just round one. And as I say, we've seen some good games. Give us your top two. Because of course, again, purple people, if you haven't been following the league. It's normally the top two that go straight into the semi-final round. Then the persons that come third, fourth, fifth, and sixth will do a playoff, and the bottom two will be relegated. So top two predictions, Damani. This uh, one I see my top ahead. two. No, you're I, a club of United, you know. No, man. I don't remember that one. Uh, I think. <laughs> no, you have to put your club, man. No, I'm, I think more pleasant than Cavaliers will, be, will, will go top. I want to also probably be in the mix trying to go to the semi final. Um, yeah. Again, again, being that Waterhouse is so consistent, it's going to be very hard for me to leave them out of the top two position. But if they do get left out of the top two position, it is because of those two teams that you would have mentioned um, Cavaliers versus Arnett Guard, um, versus um, Mount Pleasant as well. So uh, I guess it's between those three for me. But honestly, I can't leave out Waters. It's very hard to leave Waters. I mean, the defending champions, we know what the defending champions have to offer. And I know it's your club, but you don't want to be too biased in your prediction. But yeah, I think the top two for me will definitely be Mount Pleasant and um, um, Waterhouse. I think Cavaliers, you know, being that they have a target on their back, they will definitely be in the playoff round. Definitely. And once they get in the playoff round, they will be in the semi final. And from there on, you know, Cavaliers have that ability and Rudolph Speed will do that. But, um, Top six, so 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 you're, so you're third to fifth to sixth position. Who you see in that mix? You think Gumbelank right. will make a surprise? <laughs> I think Arnett will be in the mix, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Dumbo Holding, I think they definitely will be in the mix again this, this, this time around. Uh, that is how much teams? One more? Yeah, at least one more. Uh, two more, two more, two more. Can we, you selected your top two, so we need two more to make the four. Yeah, man, I mentioned Waterhouse to finish it. So, Waterhouse, oh, yeah, so Arnett, Arnett, mm -hmm. Arnett Dumbo Holden. Uh, I think you're going to be a battle between either Portmore, mm -hmm. Portmore and Tivoli. Portmore and Tivoli. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Tivoli's coach last year with the squad that he had, he surprised everybody. And of course, you know, he is also the head coach of St. Andrew Technical. Who is now who went to four straight Manning Cup semi finals? So he's definitely one of the coaches that you need to watch for. So I can't count out Tivoli out of the mix on that premise. Um, um Dumbo Olin, I still think Dumbo Olin going to have a lot to offer, so I won't, I won't really factor them in, even though they've acquired Jamil Aria. But Jamil Aria is not just the only one, you know, it, they're gonna need a lot more puzzles, um, pieces to the puzzle to, to go through. All of you are iffy for me. I'm not sure. So my my um third to six will be it would include Arnett Gardens, it would definitely include Tivoli, Portmore United, and there, and of course, you know, I said there's three up at the top. So between up at the top is between Cavaliers, 
um, Waterhouse and Mount Pleasant. So the, the food from that will fall there. So that will be my top six. And for your relegation battle, who are you looking at? Uh, surprise, surprise, and Mr. Hill. Yeah, yeah I that's, that's it too. Yeah, so Moby, Moby and uh, Humberland. Again, um, not because we are enterprise or virgin or anything like that, but the truthful, the truth thing is that uh, I know for a fact that some of the players that he would have gotten through the transfer window, they did not feature in the first game. I know that for a fact. So I will give him the benefit of the doubt. He, I don't think this season around they, they will be in any scraps for the relegation battle. I more see Montego be United in that scrap there. And I think Veer, to be honest with you, I think Veer will be the team because Veer was also the team that was struggling last year. Um, I've not seen any any real improvement. It's just one game, to be honest. It's just one game. But I've not seen any real improvement from Veer. You know, of course, they started extremely well last year and I was saying, oh, the Morina effect and then typical Donovan Duke style intend to fail when it, when it matters most. So, yeah, I, I honestly think, and I'm being brutally honest with my brother, I just honestly think like Veer is going to be one of those teams. Because, of course, you know, Veer would have been the team that was going to be relegated from the previous season. And, of course, you know, it would, the rule changed, so Veer actually stayed in. Um, so... That's where it is for me. I think it's Veer and Montego Bay. Um, it, it, it's always good to see a team from the West staying in, but I don't think Mobile is going to stay in, especially the fact that they are traveling every single time to Kingston. And that in itself is a factor. Um, um, a lot of teams are already complaining that Montego Bay is playing all their games at 3 o'clock. But I mean, Montego Bay is traveling from all the, West, from all the way in the West End. So. But Damali, one more good thing to finish off on is that there's no real signs of any positivity in Corona that has been affecting our football at the schoolboy level or even at our Jamaican local Premier League. So that's a very, very good feather in the cap there for the Federation of Football. And I will most say a big thank you for the what's 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 it, what's it governing body of the because I know it's not the PLC anymore. What's the I, I always tend to I think it's a PFAG. P no, it's not the PFAJ. What's the name? It's no, no. Oh man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um I can't remember the name, but PFJL. PFJL. Yeah, PFJL. PFL, yeah, PFJL. So yeah. we must say a big thank you to do to those guys and a big thank you for the sponsorship. And people, we ask that you continue to stay tuned to two halves so you can get your update on the Jamaican Premier League. Because it's the only place you can find that. And of course, you know, we're working on getting into the field so we can get um on the fields interviews and reactions right away so damani any more thing before you leave up no that's that i'm looking forward to the season hopefully we can get more venues um yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah. to add to the appeal of it and uh, and, uh, and i hope that the, the funds can be reinstated soon uh, I don't see that, but I don't, I don't see that at all because it's the <laughs> national team. Now I get fans, I don't see them all for the local, but again, as we say, there has been no sign, and it's just puzzling as to why the, the, the government is even what we leave that alone because there's no real sign of positivity rate going up in or being caused by football. So I, it was just a shocker for me not see not not seeing the green light for the fun. But we'll definitely get our vaccinations up, and uh, we'll definitely be in. Again, on the issue of the um, stadiums and facilities to play additional games, we understand that because schoolboy football and because of cricket and also the national setup, that's why there was some challenges as to getting secure venues. Um, I know for a fact that the St. Anne um, facility Jacksal. Uh, applied, Jacksal applied for, for that as well. And so they would have gotten some form of green light. And then soon after that, I think it's 24 hours after they understood that they so there was some 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 something that needs to happen there. Um so hopefully, as you say, we get more um venues because I really don't like the Astro Turf. The Astro Turf, you see the players stopping continuously trying to sort them boots, it's affecting them game. Yeah, so but it's week one, people, and it looks really good for the Jamaican Premier League. And of course, the coach over there, so you know, is the CEO and the founder of Prembokal Elite Soccer, and also working very closely with Cavaliers, a defending champion, in just the one telling us. <laughs> so, so, people, 
All your boy Jeremy, of course, you know the Bridget, Coach Kildare, ensure that you continue to like, share, and subscribe as you get more views and news on the Jamaican Premier League. This is the big boy show the two halves. People are out. Come on, thanks for brother, um, brother Kildare. Bless up. All right. Ooh.